Good morning, Manitoba. I'm Larry McIntosh, and I'll be your host for the next hour and every Saturday morning from 8 to 9. Thanks for tuning in. Last night was Peak of the Market's 21st annual charity fundraiser dinner. Chef Kelly Andreas and everyone of the Delta Winnipeg did an amazing job. We had 450 guests attend and enjoyed a fantastic Manitoba-made meal. As part of our event, everything has to be from Manitoba, currently available in Manitoba. So all the vegetables, the meats, everything was Manitoba. And we enjoyed the Danny Kramer uh, dance band. It was truly a celebration of all things Manitoba, the food, the entertainment, and the friends. We're also very honored to have guests not only from Manitoba, but from Alberta, Ontario, Wisconsin, Washington, and Idaho. See, the word gets out that we can hold a dinner. However, the most important thing about last night's event was we raised money for Cancer Care Manitoba. Well, I don't know how much money we raised last night. Certainly the silent auction, the raffles, and the donation to the door all looked great. Thanks to our sponsors of this, of this event and to everyone who helped out by donating to Cancer Care Manitoba. It was a great evening. My guest this morning is Cheryl Mazur, General Manager at St. Vitale Centre. Good morning, Cheryl. Good morning, Larry. How are you? Great. Sorry you couldn't join our event last night. It was, it was fun. I know. I know. I have always hear that you have a great time, but unfortunately when it gets this time of year, we get very busy and there's a lot of commitments. I'm sure you have the same. A lot of commitments at the, the shopping center. Is it busy, the shopping center Christmas? or? Well, <laughs> well, yesterday we opened our first pink store in Victoria's Secret. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, breaking news. Yeah, it is breaking news because it's the first pink store that uh, has hit Manitoba and Winnipeg and uh, very excited. So we had a lot going on at the shopping center. So even this time of year, it's obviously November 22nd. Is it not too late for stores to open for Christmas? You'd think it'd almost be getting too close to Christmas. Uh, You know, usually stores do open in September, getting ready for the fall season. But uh, Mm. we planned, we've been planning this one for a long time. And uh, this was their opening date, and that's what they planned it for. Well, welcome to the city for them. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think that's great. So, uh, does it seem odd we're sitting here at Polo Park Shopping Center and we're talking about St. Vitale Center? Does that seem odd to you at all, or are you okay with it? We're, we're fine. Actually, you know <laughs> what? We all get along very well. It used to be uh, we're all competition years ago, but we always get, we have Christmas get togethers. We uh, talk about sales. We invite each other to our opening events. So, uh, you know, when you have a store in Winnipeg, we're, we're not that big of a city, yet we are that big. Mm-hmm. But we can all get along well and share ideas and uh, store openings, and it's it's good for everyone. And, and I, I was just being silly on that comment because I know you and Deborah get along well. I know you're 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 competing a bit too. You want to get the first of you know the new stores in town as a corporation or as a as a as a mall. You want to get that first. But it it's about Manitoba. We all tend to work together in some degree. We do, we do, and that's what makes us so unique and what makes it a great place to live. So I said in the introduction last week that you were going to be on the show today, and I said that Santa was arriving last week. Did, did, did he arrive? He absolutely arrived. He arrived uh, actually on November 13th at 5 o'clock, and the first 100 children were able to get milk and cookies once they visited with Santa. And, of course, it's always an event. I mean, I could sit there for hours and... Uh, not do any work and watch all the kids go through because it's so much fun. I actually, you're going to seem to think this is a little strange, but I received a couple of emails from a couple of the kids that were there in the first hundred. They would prefer to have carrots and milk next year if they were the first hundred instead of cookies. You know, I'm just throwing it out there. No, I didn't get an email, but I thought I'd throw it out there. <laughs> it's a, it seems logical. I'm debating. I'm debating how to get the healthy aspect in there. You know, it's always a thought. You never know. Could be a different reaction. <laughs> So Santa's, Santa's a huge attraction. People want to see him, and you could watch it all day, you were saying? Well, you know, absolutely. Uh, Santa, we, have a, we had a new castle that we put in two years ago. It's actually the outdoor castle in the forest because that was technically Santa's first castle, so to speak, was hmm. the forest. And uh, it's unique. It's, uh, we have a talking raccoon, a little chattering raccoon in there, and a lot of interactive things. But it's mainly Santa that's the attraction. I mean, he's... Everybody wants to get in there and talk about what they want for Christmas and their wishes for everyone. So it's uh, it's a good time of year. And and that you know obviously the the mall is decorated for Christmas. Santa's arrived. Is that the first indication of that whole feeling of Christmas, or has it come earlier than this? With because the weather was a little bit warmer in October, Mm. it's been a little bit slower. 
I think we're all the same where we don't start our Christmas shopping until we feel that little, uh, that iciness hit or the snow on the ground. So it, it really depends. You know, we do have some people who shop very early, but it really is, isn't until Santa arrives uh, that we start to see the hustle and bustle come on. I, I shop for Shelly. That's the only one I'm actually responsible for to shop. And I kind of do that. What time you open till on the 24th kind of a thing. I'm one of those, I'm one of those guys that runs in the mall and looks for something. Is, that, is there a few of me out there, people like me? There's many of you out there. Really? And it's usually of the male version. Really? It now is. that's stereotyping a it, little bit, isn't it? It is. No, it really, really is. You see a lot of men out there on the 24th, but it's usually for gift cards, which are very popular, or else the jewelry stores make a big killing. Mm-hmm. So. And, and there's nothing wrong with jewelry. Absolutely. Absolutely nothing. Everyone loves jewelry. So pink opened, you said, this week? Yes. And shouldn't you be wearing pink today then in honor of them opening? I'm just asking. Well, Can't see be. it on the radio, obviously. I will be, but <laughs> not quite yet. Not yet, eh? <laughs> and, and is there any more stores opening up in the next little while, or is it uh, looking into next year now? We'll be working towards next year. Um, again, it's it's openings are usually come in the springtime or the fall. Um, and we did have a few stores that opened back in the fall. We had Brown's Shoes come in. We right. had the first Clark's Shoes. Um, we've had Diva Lingerie. So we've, uh, we've had a lot of stores open this fall, and we're almost completely, completely full. And that's a good thing, isn't it? That's a good thing. Because you want to be full. We want to be full, and, you know, as long as we're full, there's more stores for everyone to come visit. Absolutely. We'll be back be- right back with Cheryl Mazur, General Manager of St. Patel Center, after we take this break for your 680 CGOB weather update. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Food and Friends. Peak of the Market has a mobile recipe app that works on your smartphone, including the iPhone 6, and on your iPad. It's available absolutely free through Apple, Android, or the BlackBerry World app stores, or via peakmarket.com. All you have to do is go to any of these sites and search for Peak Recipes, Peak Recipes. Here's a few features of our new app. Over 4,000 recipes, no internet connection uh, required, so once you've downloaded, it doesn't take much uh, memory in your phone or the in your iPad, but you don't have to have an internet connection to, to search all the recipes. You can search recipes using any combination of keywords like potatoes and chicken or ingredients or meal types. Measurements come in both metric and imperial, so whatever you want to use. Add recipes to a shopping list and then check out the items, uh, check off the items as you shop. Add notes to the recipe, like next time add more vegetables. Or resize the font of the directions for easier reading. And one of the features that, to me, was important when we designed this app was there's no in-app advertising. There's no absolutely no ads in there. Nothing's going to pop up. Nothing's going to ask for anything. It's just about recipes, all of which have vegetables, but they have meats and fish and everything else. We're very excited by our new recipe app, so please download it and give it a try. And if you don't like it, you can always delete it, but please give it a try. We're back with Cheryl Mazur, General Manager at St. Vitale Centre. Uh, during the weather there, we were talking about Black Friday's coming up. It's, it's this coming up Friday, right? Yes, it is. Friday, November the 28th. So that's, that's a huge thing in the United States. Uh, people do crazy things on Black Friday. Are we doing anything in Canada? Well, we will open earlier. Oh, yeah? Um, our doors will open at 7, and a lot of our... Normally, our doors open at 7.30, but we've had a few people who write, want to open right then. Mm-hmm. and uh, But we'll probably open our doors a little bit earlier. The mall walkers will get in, but we're uh, we're announcing that our stores will open at 8 a.m. on Friday. Oh, wow. We're not the types to do the 3 a.m. like you do in the U.S., but still, we have a lot of tenants who are U.S.-based, um, as well as a lot of Canadian tenants who are already planning for the big day. And certainly some people want to go to the U.S. It's a, it's a weekend away, and generally year-round, Black Friday, I'm sure, is included. But if you look at the exchange dollar, it's not really good right now, but this, this is a way of offering it right in your own backyard, so to speak, what you're doing. Well, we'd like to keep, as, you know, as everyone would, we'd like to see everybody stay, keep Absolutely. their shopping dollars in Canada. And I know uh, we still hear that some people feel that there are better deals in the U.S., but we see some of those deals on Black Friday, and they're amazing. And it's, it's a short drive. It doesn't cost you the hotel. It doesn't cost you the gas. And we've got a lot of great retailers here, so why not stay in Canada? And I, I agree with you. I want people to buy Manitoba vegetables versus U.S. vegetables or imported vegetables. So I 100% agree. We want to support what's here in our backyard. Absolutely. Um, it, there, there's no reason to go down to the U.S. I mean, whether you're coming to St. Patel Centre, and we hope that's where you end up, because 
you know, obviously Pink and Victoria's Secret are there, so are many other stores. But uh, we have a variety of shopping centers in the city, and I'm sure they'll all be offering the same type of deals, um, better deals, and same hours. Is this something you've been doing for a few years, or is this new? We started it a few years ago um, because you want. we do have U.S.-based retailers. We do have people who want to open early. And we are trying to compete with them and try to keep try to keep the people here. On the other side, I think the U.S. is trying to uh, as well get into our Boxing Day and offer Boxing Day sales. So it's all about keeping the dollar here. It's all about being creative. And many retailers are. They'll do a lot of different things on Boxing uh, Boxing Day. Pardon me, on Black Friday that they wouldn't do any other time of the year. So it's it's about trying to just generate that interest and that excitement here in uh, Manitoba. And, and when you say that, when I when we have a lot of customers in the U.S., we sell a lot of vegetables down there, and you talk to people about Black uh, about Boxing Day, most of them don't know what the heck you're talking about, right? It's not, a, it's not a big term down there. Black Friday is their Boxing Day, I guess. If you go down to North Dakota, they will know what Boxing Day is, but the further south you further go, south, they're yeah. not aware of it as all. They're not familiar with it. So uh, it's, it's not as big a deal down there. And is is Black Friday going to be a big day for them all, or is it uh, as big as getting towards Christmas, or what do you see? Well, we just held a shopping event that we've held for the fifth annual year called Behind Closed Doors, oh, and that yes. was a fabulous night. So that's sort of our kickoff, and now we're going to concentrate on Black Friday. And again, it, it depends if, you know, a lot of people are given the day off, or they take the day off and they come out. So we're still seeing that will be another great day for our center. What do you see happening in the mall over the next few years? Do you see more stores? Well, obviously, you're full right now. You were saying the last segment. Do you see more stores coming in? Do you see what? Do you see a trend in, in malls at all? Here's you a vague question for you. We've well, we've <laughs> done very well over the last since the start of the year, since the end of last year, almost 12 months straight. We've been seeing very slow but good increases at St. Vitale Center, but it is tough. We're hearing that it's tough out in the market. Um, you know, there's a lot of competition out there. Some retailers are struggling, but we've still seen things go up. That could change. We don't know where it's going to be in a few years because some retailers do look to expand. Others want to stay where they are and just see where where it's going to take them over the next year. That's a tough one. We've still got a lot of interest because of who we are and where we are. And we're the, we call our shopping center the number two mall, although we consider ourselves the number one one. Mm-hmm. Um, so... We don't know where it's going to go. I mean, retail is tough, and you have to have great customer service. You have to appeal to the people. It can always change. And, and somewhat, uh, Manitoba is a great place, and they could be doing well in your mall or in, in Manitoba in general. But if they're not doing well in some other centers because of a recession or especially in the U.S. had some real bumps in the road, that could affect what the, their expansion plans are would be as well. Exactly, and we have run into that. We've had some interest uh, from people that we've talked to over time, and they just want to hold off for a little bit. So it um, it takes some creativity to keep that to start a store, to keep that store going, store going, and to actually grow it. And you know, you want to be you you do want to be careful. You don't want to jump into things, and that's what a lot of people are considering right now. But as I said, we're still we're still seeing our numbers go up, and we're very happy with it. We'll be right back with Cheryl Mazur, General Manager of St. Patel Center, after we take this break. Welcome back to Food and Friends. It's time for our recipe segment called Now We're Cooking. You don't need to write this recipe down as it is today's recipe of the day at peakmarket.com. And now it's in the Winnipeg Free Press. Today's recipe is bean vinaigrette. Bean vinaigrette. Here's what you need for the recipe. One and a half pounds of beans, either yellow or green, three tablespoons of lemon juice, two tablespoons of olive oil, one clove of garlic minced, one teaspoon of salt, and two green onions chopped. Wash and trim the beans, then place in boiling water until tender crisp. Drain and refresh in cold water. In a small bowl, whisk together the lemon juice, oil, garlic, and salt. Then stir in the green onions. Arrange the beans on a salad plate and drizzle the the dressing on top. In this recipe, serve six. 
Again, this recipe is today's recipe of the day at peakmarket.com and now available in the Winnipeg Free Press. And all the recipes on our website and in the newspaper have both metric and imperial measurements. We'll be right back with Cheryl Mazur, General Manager at St. Patel Centre, after we take this break for your 680 CGB News, Sports and Weather. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Food and Friends. No matter what age you are, I think everyone has a favorite Sesame Street character. Peak of the Market's new Sesame Street potato and onion bags feature Elmo, Big Bird, Grover, Oscar, Abby, Bert and Ernie. I hope you've had an opportunity to see our bright and colorful potato and onion bags when you're in your favorite store. Along with the characters, you'll still see the Peak of the Market logo, so you're guaranteed it is growing right here in Manitoba. We're very pleased to partner with Sesame Street Workshop on the Eat Brighter program, and I hope you enjoy the bags as well. We're back with Cheryl Mazur, General Manager at St. Patel Centre. Do you have a favorite Sesame Street character? I think it's, you know, Big Bird. That's kind of our generation. Big Bird's been around. You know, two weeks ago, Sesame Street was 45 years old. It was started in 1969, I think. Wow. It's hard to believe. And Big Bird was one of the first characters. Oh, he's just, you know, you want to run, run up. Everybody wants to run up and give him a hug. So I love him. Here's something. If you drive up to our building at 1200 King Edward Street in Winnipeg, just north of the airport, we have a banner up there. It's 150 feet long. And the, and the highest part is 18 feet high. We have all Sesame Street characters on there. That's why I'm talking about it. Big Bird's 18 feet high there on, wow. our, on the front of our building. That's it's, good. It's quite cool. People stop by to have their picture taken with them. It's, it's neat. Well, that's cute. I know you're not that into the city, but you should drive by and I'll see have to. see Bert and Ernie and to. Elmo and all all the gang. The whole gang. So right. you're saying off air when we're in news that you expected me to ask you what your favorite vegetable was. So what's your favorite vegetable? Mm, I have a few of them. I mean, in the summertime, obviously, it's the uh, the beans, Manitoba grown beans, and the cucumbers and tomatoes. And I'm very much I'm not a vegetarian, but I could exist on vegetables. Oh. I like making stir fries and salads and they make fun of me at work when I actually buy something that might have a piece of meat in it. <laughs> they wonder if something is wrong with me. So the recipe we had bean vinaigrette there would have been right up your alley with the beans. Sounds perfect. Yeah. So the mall obviously coming into a busy time. Is it extend the hours at all? Uh, we have just extended our hours. Uh, we started on the uh, 17th and we're now open 9 to 9 Monday to Saturday and 9 to 6 on Sundays. So Saturday night now as well. Saturday night as well. So it, you're ready to do business. We are ready to do business. Um, it, it, you know, it offers people the option if they can't get there during the day, if they're working during the week. And sometimes people do want to come with their families and make an, an event. So it gives them that option if they're uh, all working different hours, shift work, et cetera. Is parking an issue at Christmas, holiday Always season? Always an issue. Yeah. You will find cars parking on our boulevards. You will find people carpooling. It uh, it's crazy. We have over forty six hundred parking stalls, and we forty six hundred parking stalls. Forty six hundred. Wow. So it's it's very busy, and of course, you know, as we all are, we wait to that last minute. Now, when I used to be in retail, as we were talking uh, off air many years ago, over twenty years ago now, but one of my pet peeves was when my coworkers would take the front parking spot right by the doors. Right? You don't take the front parking spot right by the door, do you? No, we park on the edge of the lot, and we were just chatting about that the other day, saying we have to have a little chat with a lot of our tenants who do. Everybody likes to park outside the front door sure. in the morning. I mean, it makes it difficult, but if you're parking there, then where do your customers go? Well, and as I always rambled on about with my coworkers, is you're there for eight hours. How many times could that spot be used by other people throughout the day? Exactly. Um, we like to we like to offer it up to everyone. So we. You know, we often have little chats with people and suggest that they might go on the edge of the lot. And actually, if it is somebody who's working late and they're nervous about getting out to their car at the end of the night, our security will mm. offer you a safe walk because we want to make sure that everybody gets home safely. That's great. I've seen in the U.S. and probably in Canada, too, you can tell me, but I've seen valet parking at malls. Is that, you ever seen that? I have. We've often spoken about it, maybe oh. even during our special event. It takes a little more to get that in place, and you have to think about the liability and how you would work this. So, you know, it, it's crossed our minds. We haven't gone that route yet, but perhaps in the future we will. It, it's something like I've seen in California. We visited customers that, and you're thinking, how hard is it to walk in California? Beautiful weather a lot of the time, right? <laughs> but you think of here in the winters. But I'm not sure if it would go over. I'm not sure that I would valet park necessarily, but it's an option, I guess. 
I think in, uh, especially in Winnipeg, we have so many people who do like to bring their cars and do like to have the option of parking where they want to. And you're right, they'd rather probably spend that dollar on something that they can purchase, right? So, I mean, we have considered it. If we ever did it, we would probably do it for a special event evening and see how it works out. But it's somewhere in the future, I think. And the mall itself, I've noticed, it, it seems like it's always renovating. It's your, is that an ongoing process in, in, in malls? Well, we did um, a renovation, finished it about two years ago, and it's $11 million. So we upgraded the lighting and the floors and the furniture. And you do have to. You always have to upgrade. We, um, we ask that our tenants do regular renovations mm -hmm. when they have lease renewals or when they're coming in. So we have to follow suit. And you also want to be modern. It appeals to the customers. And uh, we've had a lot of great response from the current renovation. So we're very pleased with it. So eleven million dollars. I mean, that's a substantial investment in the mall in the community. That that's that's a lot of uh, shopping. It is, <laughs> but you know, our owners value the shopping center. Our it, it totally comes from them. Uh, they made the decision. They see the value of retail and the people in Winnipeg, and they wanted to provide them with a nice place so that they can come. And as you know, our food hall is one of a kind. So to even embellish that, it's it's added. It's an added enjoyment for people. So, Yeah, you think back to the malls. Uh, when I was growing up, there was a food court, and it was pretty dingy, and it was a, you, know, you had your restaurants there. But the food hall is beautiful. It's really nicely done. It is. We've, uh, even with our fireplaces, I mean, you've got the nice warm fireplaces to sit around. And when we did our renovation, we also had uh, a local, commissioned two more paintings from a local artist, Louise Collinger. And uh, she did some beautiful artwork for our fireplaces. We still have our two previous paintings on the opposite sides. So it's, it's meant to be like a big log cabin, and it is. <laughs> we'll be right back with Cheryl Mazur, General Manager of St. Vitale Center. I'm going to ask her what her favorite store is to shop in. So we'll see. We'll put her on the spot. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to Food and Friends. Food and Friends Radio is now on TV. Each radio show is filmed and will be posted on mytoba.ca later today. So if you want to see the TV version of this or previous radio shows, please visit mytoba.ca. Thanks to 680 CJOB's Nicole, who produces our show, and Chad, who operates the camera, as well as the teachers of the Broadcasting and Media Arts program at Tech Bach High School. You can also listen to an audio podcast of Food and Friends at soundcloud.com and, and at the iTunes store. So please just do a search for Food and Friends with Larry at mytoba.ca or soundcloud.com or the iTunes store, and all the shows will come up for your listening or viewing pleasure. And it's really important for me to mention that Food and Friends is only available because of 680 CJOB and its advertisers. So please make sure you tune in to 680 CJOB and listen live at cjob.com. We're back with Cheryl Mazur, General Manager at St. Vitale Center. So Christmas is coming, Santa's arrived. Other events happening in the mall in the next little while? Well, as you know, St. Vitale Center is a community-based shopping center, and we do a lot of work with a lot of different groups. As you know, during the year, we have the uh, Children's Hospital Book Market. Um, so at this time of the year, what we uh, one of the groups that we're still working with um, is the Christmas Cheer Board. True. They, uh, we will be uh, helping them to raise money and toys this year for the Christmas Cheer Board, and that will start in December. Another event that we do, um, and I believe it's our eighth annual, is uh, something called Cop Shop. Cop and Shop. Cop Shop. And I believe the date is December 10th, but curses, I'm not good at the dates. <laughs> so uh, that is where uh, it's a program that we started some years back with one of our other shopping centers out uh, east where we uh, provide gift cards to 60 children from inner city schools. And they're chosen by their schools for academic achievements, um, something that they've done specially within the community, et cetera. Um, and we pair them up with a policeman or a policewoman. Oh, wow. They come to the shopping center. They will get the uh, gift card as a treat to go shopping. With their, um, and they could choose whatever they want. They come back, they have lunch, and they get to visit with Santa, and sometimes the uh, police mascot is there, and so they spend the day with us. 
And oh, it's, it's a great event. And it really, uh, I think, helps everyone realize that the police will be in there. They're there to help you. They're there to be your friend. And it's a, it forms a good long friendship with them. And a wonderful way of giving to these kids to visit the shopping center, but also identify with police officers and give them something for Christmas in a little way. That's Absolutely. amazing. Absolutely. It's, it's a win-win on both sides, yeah. and we have a lot of customers have come in in the past and actually said they wanted to donate to give something to these kids. And a lot of our retailers, uh, we have so many retailers who have donated over the years backpacks, so when the kids leave sometimes, they get to take home something special that they wouldn't have chosen themselves. So we, we get a lot of buyback from our tenants, and it's a fabulous day at the mall. And the event they held not too long ago, uh, what was it called? When you open the doors, uh, you called, talked about last half hour, after hours, that kind of thing. What is, Behind what is, closed doors. Behind, I was close. I was so close on the name. <laughs> <laughs> Behind closed doors. That's something that, uh, and it's, it's obviously already happened this year, but people buy it, a donation to a charity to get into that. Is, am I correct on that? Yes. It was our fifth annual, and it was on uh, November 15th. And we closed them all at 6 o'clock. Empty everyone out and reopen from 7 till 10.30, and it's only for ticket holders that can come in the door. Right. They buy a ticket from, we had a variety of 19 charities or through our customer service, and it's $5, gets you in the door, and it's deals only for that one night. We also had food sampling provided by many of our retailers. We have entertainment, and, uh, you know, it... it I think we raised over $40,000 for charity again this year for different charities as they sold. And I know there are a couple of charities contacted us to buy tickets. Variety, Variety, the children's charity, I think was one of them. Don't recall the other one. But it's just, it's a wonderful time. It's early in the shopping season. Money goes to charity. It's, it's another win for the community and win for the charities. Oh, absolutely. And the, the additional prizes afterwards, we, uh, we have door prizes provided by the tenants, over 100 of them. So some of our lucky uh, shoppers were getting calls about things they won provided by the shopping center or the retailers. So it's a fun evening. They get a lot of their Christmas shopping done. It is a crazy night because when you open those doors, you mm -hmm. have seven to 8,000 people coming through those doors. But it is, uh, it's a great time, and I'm sure we'll have another one again next year. And it's fantastic you're helping out all those charities. And that's happened already, so you're away, almost a year away from it happening. But I, I think it's worth mentioning. I think it's wonderful to give back to the charities. So how many, how many stores are in the mall? There is over 160 stores at St. Vitale Centre. And during Christmas, we add a few more kiosks and carts. So, uh, but that's the range of, that we have right now. So I, I asked you kiddingly in the last segment, you know, we were going to ask you what your favorite store is, and I wouldn't put you on the spot. But do you do your shopping within the centre? I always do. Yeah. I wouldn't go anywhere else. <laughs> I do, you know, sometimes we peruse each other's shopping centers and check out what's happening. Do you have to wear sunglasses park. and a hat or anything to um, you know, blend in? No, <laughs> no, not at all. You'd think about it sometimes, but we're only there to view, go back to our shopping centers, and that's where we spend our money. Uh, you, you want to support your tenants. But if when you ask me, I actually have 160 favorite stores. There you go. There we go. We're not going to ask you to list them alphabetically or anything because that would just be testing your memory. But you have you have some some local stores. You have some chains. You have some big stores. You've got quite the combination. I believe the only London Drugs in Manitoba is in your mall, right? Absolutely. So. Yes. Yeah. No, we have a good variety and uh, a lot of very um, involved, dedicated retailers. There's there's people who love what they do. And we get comments from people that some of the best customer service is from our stores. So we're very pleased with that. So if you're doing ho holiday shopping, what's the hint? Get there early? Get there late? Well, you know what? If you're going to do your shopping, we always say get there early, especially on the weekends when it gets busy. Get there first thing in the morning. Because once you're there, you have the best parking spot. You can load up your car, and then you can go home and have the rest of the day. <laughs> but uh, again... Our stores are filled with a lot of product and merchandise, and they're there all day to sell. That's been an exciting time of year for you. We love it. We love it. it it's very exciting. People are fun. Tenants are fun. Santa's fun. And there's so, Christmas music playing, I bet. You know, it, but it's hard to hear when everybody starts uh, doing their selling and walking through the mall. You tend to lose that, and you don't want to blast it because then you scare some people away. Sure. But uh, we do have the Christmas music as well. We'll be right back with Cheryl Mazur, General Manager of St. Vitale Center, after we take this break. Welcome back to Food and Friends. Please join me next Saturday, November 29th, when my guest will be Mohammed El Tassi, owner of Sergeant Blue Jeans. Sergeant Blue Jeans has been around for 32 years. If you haven't been into the store, you must. 
They have over 12,000 pairs of jeans to pick from. Shelly and I were there last week, and you walk in the door, they instantly knew our size. It was pretty amazing. My guest today has been Cheryl Mazur, General Manager at St. Patel Center. So, website, where can people find out what stores are there? I'm sure you have a website. Yes, we do. Um, if you go to www.stpatelcenter.com, we have on there, we have Facebook, we have our new blog, Spark, we, uh, we have all our hours listed for Christmas, and if you want a listing of the stores and events, that's exactly where you'll find it. So check in, see what's going on at St. Vitale Center, and uh, we hope to see everyone out there. And this is the first Saturday. You're open till 9 o'clock at night, so you got lots of time. Oh, yes, you will. Thank you, Cheryl, for being on Food and Friends. Well, thank you. Thank you to our Nicole Bonnycamp, our show's producer, and Chad, our camera guy. Take care, and please, don't forget to eat your veggies.